डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन डाइजेशन इन द माउथ नाउ एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन आई एम शोइंग यू द मेन कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ अवर फूड सो इन अवर फूड द कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स आर प्रजेंट कार्बो हाइड्रेट्स देन in our food proteins are there and the fat is also present now among this three the starch is the main polysaccharide starch is the main carbohydrate and the digestion of the starch begins in our mouth itself so the moment we eat so eating process in biology as you know it is known as the ingestion so after ingestion after taking the food <clears throat> we are chewing the food in our mouth with the help of our teeth so the chewing of food it is known as mastication in biology chewing that is mastication and by the time we are chewing what has happened our tongue is moving upward downward and on the lateral side so the tongue is moving and the saliva salivary gland and the salivary gland they are secreting the saliva so with the chewed food saliva mixes so this is the first point of our discussion that in our mouth after we ingest the food the mastication <coughs> is occurring and we are also mixing the saliva with we have ingested the that food okay so now moving on the second point of our discussion now due to the chewing the food becomes soft as well as flexible so now the food is in the form that we can easily swallow so before swallowing the lump of food is known as bolus and this bolus we engulf or this bolus we swallow now <clears throat> once the bolus is made what happens in the bolus from the salivary gland saliva is there and in the composition of saliva we know that most of the part of the saliva is the water so in the bolus in the bolus there is carbohydrate there is protein and there is lipid so from the bolus carbohydrate protein and lipid dissolves in the water of the saliva okay so once this carbohydrate protein and lipid they dissolve in the saliva so the enzymes which are present in the saliva they can start the digestion of the carbohydrate in the mouth itself and we know the process of digestion start in the mouth that is for the carbohydrate but the digestion of protein and lipid so it start from the stomach okay so in this lecture we are discussing the digestion of starch okay <clears throat> and here in this line once the food molecules they dissolve in the liquid medium that is the water of the saliva then only the enzymatic activity on the component of food starts in various digestive organs let's say stomach or the duodenum or the small intestine so this was the this is the second point of our discussion 
Now moving on the third point of our discussion. So I have repeated the third point because as you can see this is the these are the salivary gland and we have I have already delivered the lecture on the salivary gland so now you are familiar which are the familiar, uh, which are the salivary gland where they are located and what is the composition of saliva and what the role the saliva is playing so you can if you ha you haven't seen that lecture you can go through that lecture on the salivary gland okay so this is the same point now <coughs> moving on the fourth point now in our food as I have told you earlier, there are carbohydrates. Now, which carbohydrates are there in our food? So, polysaccharide. So, mainly starch. Starch is there. Then, we are having monosaccharide. Let's say, glucose is there. Okay. Then, fructose fructose is also monosaccharide so this fructose is present in the fruit juices okay the starch starch is present in the cooked rice then the potato okay then the wheat bread so all this food they contain starch okay then disaccharide are also there let's say one disaccharide that is the lactose okay so lactose is present in our milk then we are having maltose okay so in let's say in the honey maltose is there okay then sucrose so sucrose is present in the juice of sugarcane okay so in our food there are monosaccharides then disaccharides are there and the polysaccharides are also present so here in this figure for example this is the blood and with the dotted line the partition is shown and here the food in the intestine is shown now once the food molecule they dissolve in the water of the saliva so now the enzyme of the digestive tract they can act on the food molecules so now they have the enzymes have started the chemical digestion okay and once the digestion is completed let's say in the small intestine so what happens the larger molecule they are converted into smaller molecule let's say the starch is completely digested then we are having the glucose so this glucose will be absorbed and then it will enter into the blood and via the medium of the blood it is reaches to our body cell so we were discussing the fourth point okay how the digestion begins now this point okay so most of the carbohydrate that we eat are the starch but what can enter in our blood directly let's say the glucose and fructose they can enter <coughs> in our blood stream directly but rest of the carbohydrate for example the disaccharide or the polysaccharide so we need to digest them and once the digestion of the disaccharide and the polysaccharide is completed then we are having the glucose and this glucose can enter can be absorbed and this glucose can enter in the 
blood okay so that is the meaning of this fifth point now moving on the sixth point of our discussion now this is the main point of our today's discussion okay now <coughs> in our <coughs> saliva this enzyme is there salivary amylase and the food that we have ingested in that food we know the main carbohydrate is the starch starch is a polysaccharide and starch is made up of two things starch is made up of amylose and in the structure of starch along with the amylose amylopectin is also present now we know in the structure of amyl amylose there is a this is the glucose molecule this is the glucose molecule this is the glucose molecule so all the glucose molecule join together with this alpha 14 glycosidic bond okay now in the structure of amylopectin there is a as you can see amylopectin is in the form of branch chain it is in the form of branch chain of the <coughs> glucose molecules as you can see this is the branch this is the branch okay so so in the structure of amylopectin alpha 14 glycosidic bond is there for example this one and this one and between the chains of glucose let's say this is the chain of glucose this is the chain of glucose so between the chains of glucose alpha 16 glycosidic bonds are also present okay so here in this figure as you can see on the left hand side uh, amylose is there and on right hand side amylopectin is there and if we make a bond between this two let's say this way if i make a bond okay so this complete structure amylose plus amylopectin this is the structure of starch let's say we are joining this so if i join like this with the glycosidic bond so this entire structure becomes the starch so now we are digesting the starch so this is the let's say this is the starch okay and the enzyme acting on the starch is the salivary amylase and the digestion is occurring digestion is taking place in our mouth itself okay so that's why uh, the chewing of, we should prolong the process of chewing in our mouth because <coughs> if we increase the chewing time what happens more and more saliva is mixing with the food okay and saliva starts digestion in the mouth itself so how this saliva uh, how this uh, <coughs> amylase of the saliva is digesting the starch in our mouth and this is the main thing of this lecture now here alpha 16 linkage is shown and in between glucose 14 linkage is also there so this is this is the this one is the starch and it is combination of amylose and amylopectin now we have <coughs> learned the structure of the amylose and amylopectin so now you see what this amylose is doing so let's say amylose is acting over here so this three glucose molecule are removed okay so this is the maltotriose is produce then let's say starch is uh, the amylase is acting on this way so this two glucose molecules are removed so this is the maltose let's say we are removing this two the amylase removing this two then isomaltase is form and over here if ml is acting this way let's say ml is is acting this way so this is limit dextrin 
alpha limit the extreme so in short we can say the salivary amylase digest starch and it converts starch into alpha limit dextrin maltotriose maltose and iso maltose okay so this is the sixth point and the main point and the important point of our discussion okay now moving on the seventh point now here even though this is the cartoon but this cartoon picture tells us the entire story of our digestion process so here as you can see this is the burger we are eating in our mouth and these are the salivary gland so the chewing mastication begins okay so digestion of starch begins in our mouth then we swallow this is esophagus and this is the stomach so now the bolus enters into the stomach so the process of digestion is taking place <clears throat> let's say the digestion of protein starts in the stomach then we are having this u shaped tube so this is the duodenum and this small pipes these are the rest of the small intestinal pipes and this is the larger pipe so this large pipe is the large intestine okay so the undigested <coughs> food okay due to the peristalsis it comes over here water is absorbed and now the fecus is formed and fecus finally enters into the this is the rectum and then then this is the anus and this this person now this is the morning time okay so you can understand and this is the this is not the part of our digestive system this is the water tank okay and the tap water is there okay so this is the this was the cartoon picture and it is <coughs> telling us the story of our digestion process okay now the seventh point okay see our parents many a time tells us that <coughs> you remain quiet during you eat and at the same time <coughs> they tell us to eat slowly the reason is when we prolong our chewing process more and more saliva mixes and this saliva digests the starch now in the bolus still the salivary amylase is there and we have swallowed the food so the bolus enters into the stomach okay and nearly 1 hour for 1 hour this salivary amylase continues its digestion of starch in the stomach after one hour what happens the acid let's say the hcl which is present in our stomach it inactivate this salivary amylase so now the salivary amylase is not involved in the digestion of the starch furthermore in the stomach okay so that is the meaning of this line okay and <coughs> now this is the last point of our discussion now in this point in our food fat is also there okay lipid in our food lipid are also present now for the digestion of lipid what happens you see this gland this is this is our tongue and in the tongue 
lingual minor salivary gland is present so once again for fat digestion what is happening in our tongue lingual minor salivary gland is present and what this gland is doing so this lingual gland secretes the enzyme lingual lipase and this lingual lipase let's say this is the bolus okay and lingual lipase lingual lipase mixes with the bolus and we engulf this bolus okay so let's say this is the esophagus okay and this is the bolus so in this bolus lingual lipase enzyme is there and this bolus enters into the stomach now in the stomach what happens this lingual lipase is activated because <clears throat> in the stomach acidic environment is there let's say the hcl is there in the gastric juice so lingual lipase were was earlier in inactive form now due to this hcl in the stomach it is activated okay and this lingual lipase which is now in the active form it acts upon the fat now the fat for example the ghee in oil or the butter okay this fats they are in the form of the triglyceride now what are the triglyceride so in the figure i am showing you for example this is the structure this one is the structure of triglyceride and how this triglyceride are formed so in the structure of the triglyceride as you can see this one is the one this one is the one fatty acid this one is the second fatty acid this one is the third fatty acid so these three are fatty acid and this is this one this is the molecule of glycerol so three fatty acid molecule they are join they are joining the glycerol and three water molecule as you can see this one this one and this one so three water molecules are removed so that's why over here it is written thrice h2o and the water is removed so that is the process of dehydration so and <clears throat> this glycerol now joins with this three fatty acid and one dry glyceride is formed so now in the stomach in the stomach what is happening lingual lipase enzyme okay where it is acting so it is acting over here okay so what happen let's say one fatty acid is removed so from triglyceride in the stomach due to the action of due to the action of lingual lipase from triglyceride one fatty acid is removed so this triglyceride is converted into diglyceride so now you can understand in the structure of in the structure of diglyceride what is there this is fatty acid this is fatty acid these are two 
this one and this one these are two fatty acid and they are attached to the they are joined to one glycerol molecule so this is the this is regarding the action of lingual <coughs> lipase enzyme okay and how this lingual lipase enzyme digesting the fat or the oil in the stomach so this is the eighth point of our discussion and this one this is the table for the digestion of mouth so you can go through this table and whatever the point the eight point were there in this the, uh, in this lecture so this table is uh, describing all the theory points so you can prepare this way also okay this is also very good table so you can go through this and you can prepare this and now with this table and with this eight point we have completed this presentation lecture on <coughs> digestion in the mouth i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and at the same time i hope this presentation lecture will be helpful in your studies and in your exam preparation my name is manish koshti sir i am from ahmedabad india bye bye namaste